This video is sponsored by the program's link down below on building your wealth. The coupon code to the moon expires on May 31st, so make sure to take advantage of that before the large price increase coming on June 1st. Now let's get into the topic. Folks, San Jose. My goodness, another shooting and more people dead. This is an absolute tragedy. And the San Jose shooting has shown a new spotlight on gun violence in America, but also society in general. How do we solve these issues? Let's talk. But first, we have to understand that there is a lot missing when it comes to the shooting that happened in San Jose. First of all, the police have still not released any details as to whether or not the shooter's weapons were legally owned or not legally owned, and there's still larger motive issues at play, which I'm sure will become more clear over time. So this video isn't going to specifically be about the details that we know about the San Jose shooting and what we don't know, because those facts will come out to light within the next few weeks hopefully, uh, and we'll learn more and we'll sort of be able to revise our opinions. But this San Jose issue is casting a bigger spotlight on a larger issue in our society. And it's a very fragmented issue, one that takes a very strong foothold in politics. Let me start by pointing this out as an example, uh, and then we'll refer to some actual statistics that we're seeing. Take a look at this. Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, who is running in a contested recall election, said yesterday, wake up to the reality and take a little damn responsibility. All of us in society, he says. He says, we must move beyond the platitudes and usual rhetoric that tends to mark not just these moments, but the aftermath of these moments. In other words, he's saying, all we do is talk about solving the problem and we don't actually solve the problem. Now we know that Governor Newsom is also allies with Joe Biden and Joe Biden also yesterday came out and talked about how important gun control measures are. And we also had Newsom on Twitter yesterday say, we need to deal with the pandemic before the pandemic. That is gun violence. So both Newsom and uh, Biden are targeting guns as the simplified solution to gun violence in the country. And now I responded to this call for time to move past the stale rhetoric and thoughts and prayers and pass common sense gun laws na nationwide. That's a recommendation from Governor Newsom. Now I responded to this and said, well, why didn't you deal with this before the pandemic? You are governor of California and you have a super majority control in California. If you wanted to make changes, you have the power to make changes. Well, here's what we're finding. Myself and my research team this morning revisited a lot of research that we've looked into in the past and even added more research. And we're finding that this gun violence issue in our society is so complicated because the solution that liberals provide is guns are bad, therefore guns must be banned. The solution that conservatives provide is that people who are mentally ill should be screened and therefore should not be able to own guns. This, a, both of these are actually very overly simplistic solutions to what in reality is a very, very massive and complicated societal issue. See, we know that there are links to gun violence when we consider mental health, but there are also links to educational shortfalls, to loneliness, to a lack of proper relationship building or proper relationships, a lack of compassion, or there are even links to crime and poverty. And so when we step back for a moment, we go, wait a minute, wait a minute. The issue of that we have in our society, uh, which is expressed via the symptom of gun violence, maybe isn't one thing as simple as mental health screening or as simple as banned guns. It's actually much more deep. It's much more complicated and massive. And what I want to do in this is just show you an example of how complicated just one of these parts are. So we already know that there are clear links between poverty and an increase in violent crime. For example, if you are in poverty, you are twice as likely to be involved in violent crime than somebody who is not in poverty. We know these statistics exist. 
we have more complicated statistics for loneliness and educational shortfalls. There are massive links between wealth and inequality and rel race between gun violence and, and what happens in our country. So there, there are many, 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 many issues. And this video is not an attempt to address every single issue, but I wanna show how just complicated one issue or, or out of all of these issues can get. So remember how I said that liberals like to say, oh, guns are bad, ban guns. And conservatives like to say, well, we just need mental health screening. And, and that way folks with mental health problems don't have access to guns and there you go, then, then you solve the problem. Okay, well, let's look into this a little bit. So this morning, we dug up some of our existing research because we've been researching the health crisis and health emergency in our country, particularly in the state of California for a very, very long time, specifically because I'm also running for governor in California. If you want to see my plan, you can go to meetkevin.com and learn a lot more. But let's talk about this for a moment. Mental health is stigmatized in our country. Nobody wants to admit that they go to therapy. Nobody wants to admit that they need professional help. Even just the thought that therapy is a form of professional help is actually not a good thing. Like you would think that it's almost better to say, hey, I'm going to a doctor to solve my problem, but that means you have a severe problem. So it actually further stigmatizes the problem. And so this sometimes turns into folks oversimplifying what therapy is, is oh, we, I just go weekly to talk. It's kind of like my weekly run, my weekly exercise. What, there's, there's a lot of defensiveness and stigmatization of, of therapy and really what therapy could be used for. And that leads to what we have in our schools, a complete lack of education around mental health. Let me ask you this. We don't learn financial education in high school. We know that, but guess what else we don't learn? Compassion and mental health. We also don't learn the importance of mental health therapy. Sometimes some of us are lucky enough to maybe have a physical education class in high school uh, or play sports. Maybe we'll learn about the importance of nutrition and maybe somebody will teach us the difference between uh, the balance of omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids and how omega-9s can play into that ratio or not. Those might be things that we're taught, but we're never taught about mental health and certainly we're never destigmatized around mental health education or mental health support. I mean, as soon as we hear mental health support, it's like, oh, somebody's mental, that's bad, right? And so oftentimes what happens with these violent shootings that we have or violent incidences throughout our country is we get a very simplistic take from the media. Oh, well, they must've been mental or up, oh, we need more gun control. <sighs> well, here's why mental health gets even more complicated. See, it's not just a lack of education or the stigmatization of mental health, which the media can perpetuate. I mean, think about it. If the media on one hand is saying, oh, mental health is a problem, that's why we have shootings, then that makes more people hate mental health because then mental health is associated with taking away your guns, <laughs> right? So it's like, oh, keep mental health patients away from guns because they're obviously the problem. When, when the problem is much more than that. See, let's, for example, just think about the treatment of mental health in our country for a moment. Well, so let's go into some statistics. The reality in our country is that half of therapists do not accept insurance. This leads some to believe that maybe those who have already built up their patient book decide to cut insurance out. And so therefore maybe the more experienced therapists or potentially people who have more experience, but don't accept insurance. And that's because health insurance networks tend to pay 60 to $80 per therapy session, but the going rate in California, for example, is 150 to $200. And this is using a California number, the 150 to 200. Medi-Cal, guess what Medi-Cal pays? $70. That is right in the middle of what generally networks pay, 60 to $80 per session. But it's not just that, because health insurance is so bureaucratic and uh, politics has made health insurance so bureaucratic. Every hour of therapy that a therapist spends with a patient usually leads to about 30 minutes of insurance paperwork. And this again reiterates why maybe more experienced mental health professionals are less inclined to actually work with insurance. Also, you might go to the doctor for a physical once a year that's free, but guess what's not free? Mental health. Mental health is not free once a year and it's also not something you do once a year. In fact, you have to pay a copay, generally, depending on your insurance plan or you're paying out of pocket every single time, if they take insurance, every single time you want a mental health or therapy session. This makes accessing mental health much more complicated. And so maybe 
we actually have this confluence of issues in our country where we have a very real mental health disaster and emergency. But then when we look at our solutions, we're not actually trying to solve the solutions, we're trying to bandage the solutions. Why would I say that? Well, consider this. Gun advocates usually say, well, all we need is mental health screening before somebody buys a gun. Well, studies and research show that it's very easy to lie your way through these screenings and get a gun even if you have mental health problems. So that doesn't work. The bigger issue is a massive infrastructure and societal problem that we have around all mental health, poverty, education, compassion, relationships. Our society is so complicated and so focused on me, 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 and so focused on money, 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 that we actually spend less time caring about our friends and neighbors and people in our society. And that's why it's easier to cast, cast away folks who might be in despair or be depressed with, well, here, take some pills. You go to a primary care physician, here, here's some pills because a mental health professional isn't available for you. The minimum wait period for a mental health professional today is about 25 days. 25 days is a very long time, especially for things that should be treated in many cases as mental health emergencies. As a result, you don't have a very good coordination between primary care providers and mental health services. And so all of a sudden, when we look at the issue of guns in our society, we do know, statistically know, that more guns can lead to more suicides. It's a little more blurry as to whether or not more guns can lead to more homicides. And this is very blurry because guns can be used in many different manners. Self-defense, not self-defense, justified self-defense, not justified self-defense. And we don't actually have all of the statistics we need to make very clear cut conclusions. It's very difficult to come upon clear conclusions and statistics that say, absolutely, guns lead to more gun violence. Just like it's very difficult to, with certainty, say less guns leads to less violence. Now, folks like to point out, well, what about like Australia? Right, but now we have to correlate. How does Australia treat mental health? How is Australia's compassion environment? How is Australia's educational environment? And so when I hear politicians say, oh, the solution to our gun violence problem is banning or restricting guns, or, oh, the solution, and that's the left argument, right? Or the other solution is, no, 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 the solution to solving gun violence in America is just screen people right before they buy a gun to make sure they don't have mental health issues. It's very oversimplified. The, our societal problems are so deep rooted and so much harder than that, that the last thing we can do they say that the left's bandage or the right's bandage is the right answer. We have a much broader problem. And this is one of the reasons that when I win as governor of California, I expect to institute plans for mental health education as well as financial education in high school so that we learn compassion, we learn about mental health, and we learn about financial education or a financial education before 18. That we actually start treating our societal problems from where they begin, schooling, poverty. We start solving problems with poverty by ending poverty. We start solving problems with homelessness by ending homelessness and then working to prevent it and rehabilitating those who can be rehabilitated. And the same thing with housing. We get the government out of the way of housing so that we can build more homes and so that we have less of a housing affordability crisis. And see, all of these massive issues that we have in our society, along with many, 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 many others that haven't even been mentioned in this video, but are also important, are all issues that can create this compounding despair and depression and propensity towards violence, which is often in America expressed with a gun, but not always. And solving the problem is not as simple as the left's answer or the right's answer. It's much broader than that. It's gonna take time. It's gonna take a lot of effort. But we need to start doing that. And that's why I'm running for governor of California under my 20 part plan that tries to solve the massive real issues that we have in society. And at least I'll start because that's the opposite of what people like Gavin Newsom are doing right now. We've got a lot of talk, but we've got no start. 
If you support my message, always consider going to meetkevin.com slash donate to support the campaign. If you found this video helpful, otherwise, always consider sharing the video. And folks, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.